Hi, I'm JT with Power Oil Center, and with me today is Zach. If you found this video, we're guessing that you want to learn how to change your own oil. Today will just be the basics of an oil change on a passenger car so that when you go to do it yourself, you know what you're doing. If you want to see a video on how to change the oil in this or any other specific vehicle, check out the Power Oil Center resources page. Now, changing the engine oil on your vehicle is not as hard as you might think. And after you watch this video, we feel real confident that you'll be able to get one of the most important pieces of maintenance you can do for your engine done and done well. But before we start, we want to make sure that everything is ready to go so that when we get halfway through, we don't realize we're missing something because that'll just ruin your entire day. All right, let's see what we've got here. The first things we're going to cover are the things that come in the factory racing parts oil change kit. You've got your funnel, you've got your oil, our oil filter, crush washer, and then a sticker so you know when you've changed the oil last. From a detail standpoint, you've got your rags, you've got your latex glove and safety glasses. And from a tool standpoint, you've got your filter wrench and your socket. You'll need all of these things to get this job done. The last things you'll need include an oil spill mat, an oil drain pan, and if your drain plug and filter are hard to get to, you may need ramps or a jack. Now one thing, do not use the basic jack that comes with your vehicle. Those are really designed for short-term use, like changing a tire in an emergency, and not meant for someone to crawl underneath the vehicle with it supporting the car. An easy way to make sure you have everything you need is to purchase a convenient oil change kit. Check out our products page to see if we have one for your vehicle. So, now that we have everything we need, let's get our hands dirty and change some oil. Safety first. You'll notice that Zach and I are both wearing eye protection, and Zach has a pair of latex gloves on. The eye protection is meant to protect us from getting splashes of oil in our eyes, which may actually contain tiny particulates of metal that could scratch or damage your eyeball. The latex gloves are meant to be thin enough to allow Zach to work with the tools, but keep his hands clean. So let's get started. Let's get that old oil out of your vehicle. Because it's almost impossible to keep oil from dripping down, I put down an oil drip mat or even some cardboard to protect your floor from spills. You'll need to locate the drain plug and make sure you have access to it. In this case, we needed to lift our vehicle and we're using the ramps we mentioned earlier. With the oil pan positioned underneath the drain plug, use your socket wrench to loosen the plug to drain the oil. Once it's loosened and spins freely, Zach will unscrew it the rest of the way with his hand. This will help Zach avoid getting oil in his tools and keep a better hold on the plug. Believe me, it sucks if the plug falls into the dirty oil in the pan. Also, if you keep a little upward pressure on the plug as you loosen it, the oil won't leak out. Once it's completely loose, pull it out with one quick motion and the oil should hit the pan without running down your arm. This might take a bit of practice and I bet the more often you change your oil, the better you'll get at it. After the drain plug is removed, clean it and inspect it for any damage or stripping. You'll remember earlier I mentioned having a towel or rag with you. Use it to wipe off the drain plug as you inspect it. Now, this one's in good shape, but what you're looking for is damage to the threads that may cause a problem with a proper seal. Without a good seal, the drain plug will leak and you will lose oil. Speaking of a good seal, if you remember from earlier in this video, we mentioned a crush washer in our list of things you need. You should always use a new crush washer to make sure you have a proper seal. When finishing your oil change, the last thing you want is to have a leak because you used an old crush washer. Once the oil is fully drained out of the engine, you'll want to carefully move that oil pan so you can put the drain plug back on. You should make sure the plug is tight, but be careful not to over tighten it. Okay, let's turn our attention to the oil filter. You'll probably have to move the oil pan a bit to make sure it's under the filter. You'll also want to have some old rags or towels handy. Remember, as oil is going through the engine, the oil filter's design is to collect dirt and contaminants, so there'll always be oil in the oil filter as well. When you loosen the oil filter, oil will leak out. There's no avoiding it. So, you definitely want to make sure that the pan is positioned as well as possible under the filter and have your old rags handy. 
If you can't get the oil filter off with your hand, use the oil filter wrench we showed you earlier. Carefully loosen the filter and allow the excess oil to drain into the oil pan. After you've removed the filter, make sure the old O-ring has come off as well. I've seen mechanics miss this in the past, and when you put the oil filter back on there with two rings, a slow leak happens and nobody wants to go back and fix that. All right, now let's get the new filter on. First, Zach's gonna smear a small dab of new oil on the O-ring. This helps make a better seal with the new filter. Also, don't forget to consult with the owner's manual for your vehicle to see how tight to turn the filter. A general rule of thumb is to make it tight and then go a half a turn more. Do not over tighten the filter. With the drain plug and filter properly tightened, you can now add the new oil to your engine. Using a funnel, carefully pour the oil, making sure to limit spills and to use the amount of oil directed by your owner's manual in the vehicle. That's another reason to get your oil change kit from Power Oil Center. Our team of experts work hard to make sure our oil change kits come with the right amount of oil based on your owner's manual. We can now replace the oil cap and we'll let the engine run for about 30 seconds. This gets the oil flowing through the engine so you can check for any leaks. If you see leaks from the filter or drain plug, turn off the engine and inspect or tighten the plug or filter as necessary. The last thing we're gonna do is check the oil level on the dipstick. If you had to use ramps or jack your vehicle to access the drain plug, at this point, you can lower the vehicle so it's on level ground just like we have here with ours. This is the easiest part of the oil change. Simply pull the dipstick out, clean it off with a towel, put it back in, and pull it out to check to see if the oil is between the high and low lines as indicated here. To turn off any check engine light indicators, it's best that you check your owner's manual for how to turn them off. Included in this factory racing parts kit is a window sticker, so you can fill in the information to know when your next oil change is due. If you don't have a sticker, find a spot in your garage to jot down your mileage, in a notebook or on a spreadsheet, so you're not guessing in a few months. Well, here we are at the end of the oil change. At this point, you can put away your tools, dispose of your rags and old filter, and the only thing you can't dispose of is your used oil. You're gonna to need to check with your local community on where you can dispose of the oil. And with that, we're done. We hope you learned a lot about changing your own oil today. And when you're ready to change your own oil, visit PowerOilCenter.com for one of our oil change kits or any other oil or lubricants you might need. And if you liked what JT and I did today, like and comment below and share it with your family and friends. Thank you. <laughs>